Hello, good afternoon. Uh, again, to all of your attendees. And uh, what's your interest here in this class? Yes, I can. By the way, I'm uh, my name is Vijay, the sponsor. Uh, I'm a science graduate. I did mathematics, and uh, I got into economics later. And I found economics is a fascinating subject. It is fascinating because everything we do is decided by economics. Where are you here? Economics. <coughs> it's all about value creation. <coughs> so economics is nothing but value creation. <coughs> Let me also tell you something about economics we come across in how many of you have done economics of some sort in life? I must have, I, I'm sure you must have done economics in your degree as a subject, either at least an, as an optional subject. Have you done? Have you done? You're not done. You're not done. You, you don't know anything about economics. At least, I, know, I mean, not through uh, any study stream. Is that correct? Hmm? No, no, I'm, I'm not finding fault with you. What I'm trying to understand is that <coughs> uh, we rarely come across economics if you are in a uh, different field. But in reality, we are all economics animals. Whatever we do, whatever we choose, we choose is because of economics. When it comes to why people choose engineering, in particular kinds of engineering because that has economic value that gives you returns so economics is all about <clears throat> adding value creating value and extracting value and making uh, more value out of value you have if you become an engineer you become a chartered engineer then <clears throat> it has more value but then you sell that you sell that for a, a bigger value and sometimes it can go uh, way beyond uh, uh, the average levels uh, an engineer would be uh, looking at. So <laughs> economics is not a subject that uh, is strange to us. But unfortunately, <laughs> economics has become very strange for two reasons. One is we have not realized how much economics we have within us. Second. <coughs> We, the teachers of economics, have muddled it up completely. We kind of teach economics as something that is found on the blackboard, something that you can't relate to. Then people basically have lost interest in the subject. If you're an engineer, you just basically can't apply it, then you are good for nothing. So economics has become that kind of species in this field of change. <clears throat> uh, so I, I, I start my talk uh, is that why we are interested. Now this is uh, you know one of the most leading economic institutions in the world. In fact, I would say the the biggest international monetary fund. <clears throat> It is the one that is sitting above everybody else. If International Monetary Fund says, look, <coughs> somebody is going to have a bad time in an economy, that becomes a gospel truth. So it is very powerful. IMF has an office in Sri Lanka, or at least it, we had an office in Sri Lanka. Probably, yeah, we do have a, a small office. And they look at economies every economy they look at that's their job <clears throat> they look at what the, what is happening in an economy now when i say they are looking at the economy what are they looking at if you're looking at something say uh, uh, sri lanka was ranked recently one of the best or most beautiful islands uh, for tourism how did they look at it they looked at number of different parameters they looked at the geography, they looked at the environment, they looked at the history, 
they looked at people's social benefit, social uh, uh, conduct, all that comes about. So economics, if you take economics, economics also has its own parameters. In fact, this today's lecture is to understand how do you look at an economy? What are the things that you keep track of this economy? And how it is going to affect us <coughs> individuals, businesses, overall and what kind of changes would be necessary we can't deal with all of these things but at least if we can get to somewhere then we will make some sense out of this particular lecture now what you see here is look at the red uh, ones sri lankan economy remains vulnerable we know what vulnerable is vulnerable means we are not strong <coughs> We are subject to serious changes with the slightest push. When we are very vulnerable, we know it is very painful. In real life, we don't want to be vulnerable. In health-wise, we don't want to be vulnerable. We want to be strong. So there is something seriously going wrong with us. Have we been like this? We should ask the question. So. Vulnerability. What does it mean? I mean? We know people are vulnerable health-wise, we know what it means. You are a diabetic, you, are, you have a heart patient, you have a kidney problems, you have, you know, there can be all kinds of things, either individually or coming together. What does an economy vulnerable mean? Then uh, Sri Lanka, uh, IMF uh, again uh, looks at some of the problems here. We know if you run our credit card in disproportionate manner, we borrow a lot of money from the bank, we are in deep liabilities. <coughs> Countries have the same situations which we call debt. Public debt is how much the country is liable to pay to somebody else if this is getting out of hand that means country is in a serious problem then the the last thing is debt to gdp ratio now there are two things uh, coming in here one is gdp the other is debt what is gdp we need to understand but let's just take very off the cuff uh, point you are at home you know how much you earn if you are a company, you know how much you make sales as for a country, how much we create value. Everything we do, the, one, the, th the thing I do now here adds to the GDP because it is a value creation. <clears throat> what you are doing in the class does not add to the GDP because you are a consumer, but what you are doing in your office add to the GDP. Why? Because it adds value to whatever that is there. If you are an engineer, you give uh, 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 your knowledge, you provide structures, you give uh, advice, these are all uh, uh, values. Then there are other things you know, that the value can, uh, a, a farmer providing rice, adding value. Uh, uh, I was driving today, I can see this Uber Eats adding value. What do they, how do they add value? They add value because this adding value process <coughs> can take place in so many different, different ways. Uber does not do, uh, Uber Eats guy does not add any food into it. But what it does is, it gets from the where it is available to the one who wants it in efficient manner. So adding value. So Uber Eats are all part of the GDP as well. It's a new thing which we never had before. Right? So anyway, now <coughs> then there's this uh, uh, piece of uh, information available. This was on the uh, 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 on the uh, I think news first. This is about Sri Lanka has a lot of state-owned enterprises and SOEs are state-owned enterprises. 
it says we have huge state owned enterprises petroleum corporation sri lankan airlines ceylon electricity board <coughs> if you put them together it's more than 1% of everything we do in the country that's a massive massive value let's put a figure figure to it sri lanka's gdp is about 8 let's say 80 80 billion dollars so 1% of 80 billion dollars is, is roughly about 800 million or maybe about 1 billion dollars worth this particular three institutions combined creating a loss loss means what what, what have we been talking about? Economics is adding value. Loss means subtracting value. So it contracts you. Imagine you in your family somebody who is incurring money on drinking, drugs, casinos, losses. They are all losses to this. So it will basically affect the family. Same in the country as well. Now, this is a very easy way of talking. Should we sort of close them down? <laughs> huh? Government lotteries. But government lotteries actually doesn't add anything. Why not? Because what it does is actually it is negative. Why it is negative is a lot of people think that they are going to win one million. <coughs> and spend their cash on a ticket gets nothing in return and what do they do with that money give it to somebody who wins he gets one million he doesn't know what to do with it he starts buying cars he, 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 he basically consumes that money on some imported stuff and on top of that you have a development lottery institution you have to run this down institution as well so you basically get some people do a job which doesn't have to be there in the first place. You go to Unity Plaza, there's a lift going. Every lift has a lift operator. It's a loss. It's a loss. Anyway, those are, uh, 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 you know, looking at things that we come across. Then uh, there's another red term called external debt is estimated to be 59% of GDP. Now, <coughs> we borrow. We borrow from Sri Lankans, we borrow from outside. Now, for us, we have total debt of 59 billion, which is roughly about 50 billion dollars, our debt. So that means we have to pay back to these guys 50 billion dollars. But this debt is not going to just stay 50 billion dollars. You have to pay interest as well. So it's, it's growing unless we have a way of working it out in the reverse order. Totally if you get the uh, uh, Sri Lanka's debt <coughs> which is 90% of GDP in 2018. Now this, now you might ask me what, what, what's, what's the big deal? 90% if it is 70% what's the big deal? It is a big deal because every time you borrow government had to pay out interest on those borrowings. There are so many other issues as well. So these are alarming news. I just threw this particular pieces of, okay, now I'm coming back to the <coughs> more structured lesson. Um, economics, uh, uh, you know, when I was teaching, you know, I have been teaching economics for the last 15, 20 years. I told you, I, I, I did sciences. I came into economics later on. I was never a teacher. I was in the private sector, but now I teach at the Columbia University. Uh, this economics learning, I, I'm sure all of you have come across uh, something called microeconomics. And if you have not come across, forget it. But microeconomics is something that you can touch. You go to uh, Gedare Anagama, Food City, right? You see cabbage is so much, it's real, it's real. The prices are real, quantities are real, how much money you spend on these things is real. These are all microeconomics. Take a company. Company is making so much of profit, so much of sales. Real. 
there is somebody who can audit and say yes it is there it is perfectly correct these are real ones so we have no much of a problem with these microeconomics things you know the things that we do in the micro le level so that study that uh, kind of area a lot of you do if you do uh, uh, accountancy you do microeconomics <coughs> that's but very stereotype and absolutely boring why it gives you a sense of price but actually what you know is very different from how it works <coughs> anyway i'm not going to talk about it macroeconomics is our mandate macroeconomics has a major problem a lot of people don't understand <coughs> macroeconomics has something called certain parameter like for example price price there's no price in macro but what we say is inflation now people don't understand what inflation is we don't understand because we can't see it somebody says central bank says okay the inflation rate is so much so we all say oh, yeah the central bank says inflation is so much it was five percent now it is ten percent that means it has doubled that's the only only knowledge we have but we just can't see it why these are basically looking at the whole thing we don't look at keels we don't look at it can span we don't look at mclarens we don't look at state engineering corporation we don't look at individual we look at the whole thing it's like this take this this room for example now this room individually each one has certain activities each one works in a certain way that's a micro concept but if you take the whole room there's a temperature there's a, some kind of ambience there's ventilation there's lighting now that basically affects everyone in the same way right now that is macroeconomy it's the whole surrounding that allows or prevents us from doing things. So the macroeconomy is a bit of a vague thing. It's like the horizon. It's like the atmosphere. Anyway, but that is not going to be good enough. We need to sort of get into very specifics. These are the specifics. In macroeconomics, you look at GDP. GDP means gross domestic product. What is gross domestic product? Jaffna farmers have made chilies. Okay, how much that adds to the Sri Lankan economy? Port Authority has been handling so much of shipping. How much that has added to the Sri Lankan economy? Bus transport is there so much of transportation. How much is added there? Now take buses for example. <coughs> now buses are made by somebody else so there so there is there are two several pieces in that so each one had to be taken separately there's a bit of a calculation here but we are not interested somebody does it what we are interested in is there's something like this and what does it represent it represents the value that the country has created in a particular period what's the period one year so it is customary and it is the norm that we try to find how much of value has been created <clears throat> now out of that say take us for example now us's value creation is something like in trillions dollar trillions sri lankan value creation is just few billions who is going more powerful economically you might say, well, they, they are big, they are because of their power. That's not the way we look at it. We look at, okay, how much you have created value compared to your last year. So that means it's not only the GDP, but you're looking at GDP as a percentage growth. Okay? So, so, so we, we derive some figures out there. I'll come to that later on. You have CPI, another one, inflation, unemployment, <clears throat> then exports, 
than inequality. Now, inequality is not so much uh, uh, macroeconomy is looking at, but it is a social issue. It's a human issue that requires attention as well. Okay, I'm, I'm moving on. Now, when it comes to this discussion of macroeconomy, we have another problem. This is something we never had when we go to uh, uh, when we go to uh, the supermarket to buy things. How much money you have, you buy, and the money is gone, you are done. But you, as a country, that's not the way you look at. Money goes from you, all right, but it goes to somebody else. Now, this money has something bigger than just an exchange value. You, if your salary is say 200,000 rupees a month, you know, you, you can buy things up to 200,000 rupees a month. Okay. So that means you are basically restricted by the amount of money you have. For a country, there is no such thing. Country can have any amount of money. Why? They can print money. They can print money. So that means literally government can't go bankrupt. Why? We can't print. If we print, we end up in the prison. But government can print the money. So the money brings in a yet another dimension to the whole thing. Let's take for example, very simple example. Each one of you suddenly gets 10,000 rupees dropping from the ceiling to your lap. 10,000 rupees. Does it make you rich? Assuming that you know you have to spend that money within this. No, it doesn't make you rich. Why? Because everybody has 10,000 rupees. What it makes is, supposing I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to sell this mouse in this classroom. Before 10,000 rupees fell in, you would have bid for a certain value for this. Let's say 200 rupees. Right? After you got 10,000 rupees, somebody is really desperate for a mouse, he will say, look, I'll pay you 5,000 rupees. It doesn't <coughs> make a mouse, bigger mouse or more valuable mouse. It's just that you know, somebody spends that money and somebody gets it. So the money has a, a serious uh, uh, difference, but at the same time, it can create something quite different from our micro scale things. So, money comes from the central bank. Now, let me also make another point. Since money can be printed by governments, and governments love to spend money, you know, this, this present government, now because there is an election around the corner. You see everywhere boards, okay, I have spent 45 million rupees expenditure. Where did the money come from? Who gave it? Either they have borrowed it or they got the central bank to print money. <coughs> right? So that money comes into the system. Now, economically speaking, if you go on doing this, you end up on a slippery slope <coughs> and eventually the whole system goes for a disequilibrium. Okay? So this is another diagram that I like to put to perspective. Economy is like a river flowing. <coughs> it flows because unlike the river flowing, say Mahavali River for example, it is flowing from uh, <coughs> Samanalakanda. I think it's from Samanalakanda, let's say, never mind, somewhere. And then it flows out to the sea from Trincomalee. That's not the economic discussion. Economic discussion is it's a river that's going round the country. So everybody is benefiting. But if somebody say diverts money from the river, sorry, diverts water from the river, so the river gets smaller. That's what happens uh, when we do hydropower uh, projects, right? But then later on, that water comes back into the river from different sources. So what it does say is, those who are part of the river will have less amount of water coming in. On the other hand, if the water is flowing rapidly, the amount of water people can have <coughs> is going to be more as well. 
So economy is something like that. It passes from one person to another, another person to another, eventually it goes round and round. <coughs> but then, this round circular system is basically can be looked upon from two sides. One is people are earning money. That's this side. The other side is people are buying things. That's from the people's point of view. Who is the other party? Companies. Companies are the producers. Companies are so even <coughs> I'm not a company, but as far as this diagram is concerned, I'm here. I'm a producer. I produce something and I'm selling it. Okay? Right? So it goes on. Now <coughs> But this flow is affected by government. Government is not in this flow. What does the government do? It pickpockets our money. How? Taxes. The minute they increase taxes, then what happens to me? The amount of money that I have to spend will be less. Okay? Right? So, but what does the government do with the taxes? They spend on irrigation projects. They spend on poor people. So that means now poor people who never had the money to buy things gets into the loop. So <clears throat> it has its purposes as well. But nevertheless, government is a kind of a distraction there. Then there's another way of looking at it. Although I said this flow is within the country, that's not the case. Because we spend money on imports. These mics came from some country. These laptops came from some country. So that means the money moves out. But then how do we get the money to pay for this? You have to earn monies. What monies? Money that they uh, accept, dollars. Right? So what do we, how do we get the dollars from? Exports. Now, okay, now we understand the forms. If you take a country like China, what did they do? They had the circular flow. They, they, they increase exports massively. They reduce imports massively. So what happened was suddenly the circular flow gets bigger and bigger and bigger very rapidly. Over the last 30 years, China was a non-entity before. Now China is the second largest economy in the world. Okay? South Korea was smaller than Sri Lanka in 1960s. But today, though it's a small economy, it's a very large in terms of the value it creates. Okay? So this is the, the kind of uh, circular flow. Uh, just to get you an understanding that okay i said it's environment it's not just a static environment it keeps on flowing <coughs> if the flow is getting faster and bigger good for the people if the flow is getting smaller and smaller bad for the people <coughs> how do we know no okay so then there's something that is beyond us this environment this air condition this lighting who controls it the ones who is owning this building, the Engineering Institute. So Engineering Institute can make the air conditioner to run better, make the lighting to be better. So as, so they have a responsibility to make sure that people who are here will have the task completed in a manner that will fulfill their expectations <coughs> and everybody else's expectations. All right. So governments also have some these challenges. In the case of governments, government is an elected body very often. So that means they are accountable to people. People say, look, we need jobs. How do you create jobs? You have to have more production. You have to have more businesses started. So <clears throat> you what we call economic growth. Economic growth is more economic activity. More people engage. More businesses start. More businesses start means more people can be absorbed to the businesses. 
and people who are getting employed will get higher salaries as well. So that's that. Then there's another one that is something very complicated, inflation control. Let's leave it for a moment. The balance of payment. Now this is Sri Lanka's major problem. Balance of payments. I sh remember I showed you imports and exports. This difference is called balance of payments. <coughs> In the 1940s, Sri Lanka had the balance of payment huge plus, meaning we collected sterling pounds. We had large board of sterling pounds. Why? Because we imported less, we exported heavily. What did we export? Tea. And after that, we lost tea. We never had anything to replace tea. And on top of that, we started buying a lot of things from abroad. So we, our imports went up, exports went down, and today we are every year adding additional 11 billion difference. Okay, 11 billion difference. Our exports are roughly about 10 billion. Our imports are about 21 billion. So there's a difference. So that means there's a huge leakage here. And when, when that happens, what happens to you? You have to borrow. Borrow where? From abroad. There's no point borrowing from Sri Lankans. Sri Lankans are not giving you dollars. Dollars have to be borrowed from abroad. <coughs> so that is the, and that is the same reason China made a big difference. Their balance of payment is a huge plus. It was expanding. Uh, South Korea's balance of payment is hugely expanding. So they made a big plus there. And, and when that happens, how do they make the balance of payment plus? They start a factories. They invited a lot of investors to come in. <clears throat> they have a massive factory. So that means economic growth. When economic growth, what happens? Full employment. Okay? So these three are nicely connected. But what we don't understand is the, law, the top one inflation control. Now this is how we, we think we understand but we don't necessarily feel it very well. I'll give you a little example. Inflation is something that happens like for example when you're driving your car. <coughs> if you drive your car too fast, you can look at the thermometer, the, the temperature gauge. You can see the temperature gauge goes up. In an economy also something like this happens. If you try to push it too fast, you find things don't really necessarily connect well and as a result prices begin to go up. This happened when we did Mahavali project. When we did Mahavali project which was supposed to be doing in 30 years, they contracted it to 5 years. What happened was it put an enormous pressure on the resources. When the pressure on resources are high then what happens to the prices? begin to go up. We know that okay, when you are now, if you are putting up a, a, a house or something, you have to buy sand. Sand prices are going through the roof. Why? It's not sand. We don't have sand. But people are demanding more and more sand faster than a rate the sand can be really made available. Do you understand? Okay. So inflation is, if you try to drive it too fast, you can get inflation. That's one way of it. Second way of inflation is, in 2014, <coughs> you remember, oil prices went up to about 130, 40 dollars a barrel, <coughs> from something like 30, 40 dollars a barrel. That means energy prices have multiplied three times, four times. Energy is everything in our life. So this is one particular area where the inflation can creep in through uh, uh, imports. There are other possibilities. We will not get it now. Let me make a, another quick one and then I move on. When the rupee depreciated, what happened to the prices? Prices just went up. Another inflation. Okay. So the inflation is something where just to understand what inflation is, the amount of money you have is losing value. Why? 
you have the same 200,000 as you had two months ago. Your salary is 200,000. So you have 200,000 two months ago and 200,000. So money is the same. What do I mean by losing value? Things you can buy with that 200,000 is getting less and less and less. Money is nothing unless you can exchange that for goods and services that you can use. You have 200 million but you are stuck in the middle of the Sahara Desert. No communication, nothing. You have somebody who is coming with a bottle of water. What is more important? Bottle of water. You will exchange 200 million for the bottle of water. Why? Because that's the only way that you could sort of consume. Money you cannot consume. So my point is, the, uh, to understand inflation, it's the price is going up, but what really matters to us is it affects our day-to-day -day living because the things that we could buy become less and less affordable. <coughs> then um, macroeconomy uh, in the modern sense, our economy is not within us. In last November, what happened to the ru rupee, a dollar? Dollar went up or rupee went down. What are the trigger? There were many triggers, but there was one particular trigger that was very important. Does anybody know what that trigger was? Why the dollar become expensive? Because there are less and less dollars in the country. Are we okay? There is less. What made the dollars to deplete in our country? There was a leakage of dollars. Where did they go to? They went to the US. Because US increase interest rates. Interest rates increase means people have a lot of money, they are floating the money around making investments. Interest rate is one return on your investment. Take for example, if some bank says, look, I'm going to give you 24% interest on your deposit. What do you do? You pull all your money from other banks and put it in there. That's one reason why, you know, some people are now golden key, you know, what has happened? Okay. There's a risky part, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, it takes money from where it is low in returns to high in returns. So what happened there? So as a result, Sri Lanka lost oh, quite a bit of money from the country. Then, so my point is, we are not shielded. <coughs> we are, if something happens to the US, if, if the Brexit takes place, no, uh, no deal Brexit, it's going to affect us. Nobody knows how. This is the reason why uh, Britain is so worried because they are integrated with the rest of the world. It was only Britain, it would that didn't matter. But now it's going to affect everybody. Then, uh, okay, now we said, okay, there's something called economy. Economy is the whole thing. It can be measured, it can be uh, assessed. But then, this economy is on its own goes in cycles. Now, sometimes when you come to office, somebody will ask, "Hey, you got up from the wrong side of the bed." What does it mean? It means you are in a bad mood. We can move at times. These are called bio cycles. You know, there are days where you feel very good. There are days where you will you feel very average, below average. So that's a human thing. In economics also things are going in cycles. Economies are doing well, that's called expansion. If the businesses are doing good, uh, by economic growth is good, so it's good. But when things are looking bad as it is now, we are in a very bad situation. Sri Lankan economy. We are heading into the bottoms we have still not see, seen the bottom because this year is going to be even worse with Sahara doing the the last bit things have got really out of control <clears throat> okay so but without that Sri Lankan sit situation is not because the natural cycle Sri Lankan situation is total misguided mismanaged tops we have I have to say this 
when you don't manage your household properly you get into trouble <coughs> okay so this is uh, uh, th this is the conceptual part it happens uh, expansions contractions so uh, but e e even then it can go in an upward cycle or upward trend or a downward trend Sri Lankan situation if we are heading in a downward trend so that's a pretty bad thing now this is uh, a real situation uh, 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 in uh, US and Sri Lanka now as you could see here all these dips uh, uh, refer to uh, in Sri Lankan situation which we have a very unlike the US now US is a fairly uh, a smooth uh, uh, cycle because everything is very uh, organized Sri Lankan situation is not like that we are very volatile why because we don't we are very vulnerable from many perspectives we have just one export that's garments now we are depending on seven and a half billion dollars coming from Middle Eastern remittances if something happens there we are doomed then <coughs> we have imports most of I mean oil imports are all crucial to Sri Lanka then <coughs> we have tourism we were hitting something like three four billion tourism but now what happens is now I have a hotel next to my house empty to talk to any hotel here they are almost committed suicide things have gone bad so when you have a situation where Sri Lanka everything is in a very narrow basket anything happens we are very uh, uh, seriously affected okay <coughs> okay now I come to uh, uh, the specifics of uh, how to look at an economy and what I will do now from now on onwards is that I would uh, look at uh, the <coughs> how do we look at the economy because we have to focus on how, uh, what is necessary for, uh, for you and then <coughs> we look at um, specifics now when you look at the economy you can look at the economy see now if you uh, send a marriage proposal you send certain specifications your age your complexion your income your uh, your your background your height your hair your picture so in an economy also you have certain compartments production prices fiscal policy what is fiscal policy what does government do through the budget <coughs> that matters a lot then <coughs> what does the central bank do, which we call monetary policy then trade and industry policy that means what does government do with regard to what we do with the rest of the country rest of the world for example give me an example in the uh, trade and industry policy any example that was very controversial these days or last few days or last uh, few months I would say before Saharan came in, I'm talking about 2018. There was a big controversy. What was it? Free trade agreement with Singapore. The free trade agreement with Singapore is basically saying whenever things are imported to the country, <coughs> government imposes taxes. What do they impose taxes? Number of reasons. First, government needs cash, so they tax they tax cars very much for that reason. Second, whatever it's things, a lot of things we import, we produce here. So if you do, if you just allow the imports to come in freely, these guys are totally doomed. This is one reason that a lot of industrialists say, "Don't do this." Okay. Third, <coughs> there is a, a pressure from. Uh, organizations like World Bank, IMF, to fall in light in the thinking, hey, when it comes to business with other countries, try to have less and less obstacles, taxes. Okay, America was leading that before Trump came. 
Now Trump put everything, uh, uh, you know, uh, upside down. What Trump does is totally against what World Bank has been preaching, but IMF has been preaching to us for decades. All right. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> then the third point is how do you manage the dollar during Mahindra Rajapaksa regime? We will see that he kept the dollar at a particular level. That's one policy where you are trying to have the dollar stable at a particular level. The present government came in, they allowed the dollar to uh, move around and it was now going totally out of control. And the last, international wealth and liabilities. Now that section is that how much debt we have with the rest of the world, how much borrowings we make, how much money we are owing to uh, China for example. Now, uh, Matala, uh, Mat not Matala, um, uh, Hamad Port. Hamad Port was given to China to bring down the liabilities. So, okay, you take the port. So, that means 1 billion liability that we had with China is now being set off with the port. Okay, so these things uh, matter a lot. Now, <coughs> When it comes to specifics of uh, uh, values, we look at how much, how fast the, I, I told you GDP, GDP is the value of the uh, production uh, in the country, how fast it is growing. I will skip this uh, for a minute. Uh, I will come to this. Uh, Now this is uh, uh, the GDP I'm talking about. Sri Lanka's GDP growth. GDP growth means percentage wise, how much percent Sri Lanka's economy growing. What do you see in this uh, statistic? You have 2016, four and a half percent. 2017, three and a half percent. Uh, 2018 almost 3 percent, 2019 they forecast 3.5 percent but you can be 100 percent sure it's going to be less than 3 percent because we have hit, we were hit very badly by then uh, they are, uh, okay, we look a little you know we have turned a corner, right, but taking absolute values they are miserable values. Why do I say that? Look at this. This is, we are with other South Asians. Remember, not so long ago, we were used to laugh at Bangladeshis. We used to laugh at them because every day they have some darn protest, some darn fight. They never got onto anything. Look at where they are now. They are suddenly, and this is exactly what happened to their cricket as well. We never wanted to play Bangladesh. We said, you know, look, you know, I mean, we, we can't waste time, right? And they hit us. This is precisely the cricket team's performance as well. We are competing with whom? Afghanistan to get to the bottom. This is the this is the situation we have. India seven and a half percent. Maldives six and a half percent. This is from the ADB. Nepal six point two percent. That was devastated by an earthquake. And Pakistan, <coughs> with all the trouble, they are trying to hit six percent economy. <coughs> Sorry, uh, uh, that is Bhutan, right? Okay, Pakistan is a four percent and we are even worse than Pakistan. Mind you, we are worse than Pakistan when we don't have a war. We are worse than Pakistan when we had everything <coughs> looking very rosy. I remember three years ago, we used to get uh, students from uh, South Asian countries. 
there's a South Asian meet and every year they go to some country and have this conference and there are Bhutan, uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, then um, India, Nepal, those other countries. You know one country they all love to come to, Sri Lanka. They say it's a paradise. Look, so it is so beautiful. And they say, look, when we last came, that was four years ago, and when we came now, hey, how much you have changed. The Colombo has been completely changed. So that means we had everything on the table. We don't know how to eat. We don't know how to put that into our mouths. That was what happened. It's not just the figure, it's the context in which the figure had to be looked upon. We are hitting 3.6% is a pathetic, pathetic economic growth. Normally, <coughs> when a country like us, I remember I, was, I went to Bhutan with my students. They are landlocked. They can't send anything without permission of India, China and uh, there's another country. They can't send anything. They can't step out of their country without a visa. It's that bad. Do we have a problem like that? We are the country, the last horizon in the entire southern hemisphere. We are the last. Beyond us, nothing. And we are sitting on a sea, uh, uh, shipping route which basically connects East Asia and the West. Literally we had everything, but we are not having something sensible heads. Anyway, okay, that's the politicization of my argument, but we, uh, our economic growth if you look at uh, uh, for an island country like Sri Lanka, we, we really need to be 7.5%, 8% economic growth. For a country like the uh, uh, US, you can't think of 7%. It's a mature country. When a country matures, their economic growth slows down. If the US is growing at 4%, Donald Trump is going to get pre-elected. Hats off. So, Japan is struggling to get 2%, 1% economic growth after a massive slump in the economy. And so economic growth is a fundamental figure of your health, country's health. If economic growth is not right, your health is on a completely, uh, uh, it's, it's dated, it's it timed, it's going to collapse. Okay. So, it's a major sickness we have if you don't have it. This, this is another uh, value here. Now, this is uh, what we call per capita GDP. What is per capita GDP is, for c comparison, now see Sri Lanka's economic growth, economy is 80 billion, US's economy is several trillion billions. Who is better? Who is better from the people's point of view? Then you have to say, okay, how many people have been fed out of that economy? Sri Lanka has 20 million. China has 1.4 billion. China is the second largest economy in the world. But then, okay, for each one, if you take Sri Lanka, China's economy as a cake, if you cut it into small pieces for everyone to have a same size of piece, who will get the bigger piece? Sri Lanka gets a bigger piece. Why? Not because we have a large cake. We have a small number of months. So per capita is a parameter that brings both GDP and population into one single platform. So this is a, a kind of a situation where you look at <coughs> how each country is from a standard of living point of view. Sri Lanka's per capita we will come to the per capita values later on, but per capita growth is, as you could see here, it has been flowing. So that means Sri Lankan standard living has been falling. 
and the dark colors are predictions and one thing about economics predictions is they never get right they never get and very likely and very often we love to inflate predictions we want to say look I'm going to go at this level because politically it's bad if you say we are going to grow a 1% uh, in 2019 and it could very well be the case now <coughs> look at the again the spectrum uh, from with other guys in the field Bangladesh Hedi you know I, I'm sure some of you must have gone to Dhaka Dhaka is such a primitive looking uh, uh, community compared to Sri Lankans in fact I remember I went back to Dhaka in 2016 or 17 that the first time I went there and I was going with a friend of mine I was very curious every car, every vehicle has a buffer there's a buffer and there's a metal buffer in front of that <coughs> behind also there's a metal buffer in I said why, why do you want to uh, have no the thing is when it comes to the color light you always knock the vehicle in front to stop and if you look at most of the vehicles they are all dented in with the buffers they are all dented that's a kind of intelligence that's a kind of literacy that's a kind of uh, level of uh, uh, thinking people because people are very Sri Lanka on the other hand highly literate one of the best in the world health wise Sri Lanka is one of the healthiest in the world our social indicators are way above average class. We are not compared with the other guys. We are never being compared with the Africans. We are not compared with the South Asian because we are way ahead. We are being compared with middle income countries like uh, uh, East Asia, you know, Thailand, you know, those countries. Now this is, uh, uh, if you don't understand, just uh, leave it alone. But as you could see here, this is the, how much the prices have gone up. It matters. Why? When the prices go up, <coughs> you should expect interest rates are going to go up. You should expect your living standard is going to go down. You should expect <coughs> profits are going to get squeezed. You should expect exchange rate is going to depreciate. Okay. There are uh, complicated mechanisms, but let's not worry about it. So as you could see here, uh, 2018 the, the prices uh, increase has been much moderate, but 2017 is quite on high side. This is despite the fact that we enjoyed from 2015 onwards, we enjoyed a very low oil prices. Our import oil prices were at the lowest levels. Despite all that, something had gone wrong. Now this is, uh, I was talking about the balance of payment, <coughs> now this is our major problem. The problem is, as you can see here, although we didn't earn money, we have been spending money on imports. We have not been earning money to pay up the imports. So as a result, you can see 2016, 17, 18, our uh, current account balance is increasing. You might say 3%, what's a big deal? 3% is massive, absolutely massive. Okay, so 3% means what? 3% means current account balance is how much money we paid out, how much money we got. That's the difference. Okay, not got through loans, just got through our earnings, remittances, uh, uh, exports. Uh, you know some guys you know uh, tourism you know all that so that's money coming in and uh, imports on, on cars on petrol or on on food okay. so if you take that money value divide that by the GDP that's what you're getting okay so from the GDP's point of view 3% is negative and we are hoping that things are going to be improved let's see now this is uh, <coughs> current account balance uh, from uh, countries, uh, different countries point of view. There it's a bit of a different scale. As you could see here, uh, Afghanistan is uh, at the lowest level. 
not because Afghanistan is doing extremely well, Afghanistan is isolated. Afghanistan is not doing much business with the rest of the world. So as a result, rest of the world expenses and e incomes are at a very low level. But Bangladesh is very good. Better than Sri Lanka. How come? Sri Lanka, Bangladesh starts coming uh, 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 much later than Sri Lanka. And in fact, if you go to Bangladesh, most of the Bangladesh factories are managed by Sri Lankans. And when Sri Lanka was trying to achieve something like six and a half billion, seven billion import exports of garments, how much Bangladesh is doing? 43 billion. Purely on account. Of course, the Bangladesh has another uh, advantage because their energy is, they have a lot of gas in it. So they have uh, energy bills are not as much as Sri Lanka. Anyway, but that's not an excuse. And as you could see here, India is doing well as well. That is because India is pushing a lot of exports now, trying to earn money. So, uh, uh, Maldives uh, has a bit of... So the gas is, uh, but uh, isn't it the gas is being uh, subsidized or even free or something? Well, very difficult again. Huh. Now they are not giving. So it is now it's it's gradually. Now they're taking out, but as I heard, they're giving it to India. Ah, oh, right, okay. And uh, now industry doesn't get gas. Ah, so that may be another reason. So if you are selling, giving it to India, it is not giving it to, for Summa. So they are selling to India. So I mean, you are, you are, earlier the gas was uh, basically uh, spent by people. I mean, it was given free of charge. Of uh, yes, more, more free of charge. I mean, the domestic users are getting gas free of charge because there is a lot of gas underneath. And uh, but now if they are selling it to India, means you are earning dollars, and that dollars are coming in. So that. Price, and high but the, hmm. and, uh, nothing cheap there. But no, that the, the the prices, domestic prices, are reflected by partly. I think there is a large uh, agriculture in Bangladesh. Yes. Yeah, right. So we have around twenty million people. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Bangladesh uh, probably uh, uh, import less. But Sri Lanka had to rely on a lot of imports as well. We we don't have. Yeah, but they import, they export it. Yeah. Right. So garments have made a big difference to them, <coughs> whereas we have not been able to. Okay, okay. So I now I go back to uh, um, what I was trying to. I'll I'll quickly run through this. It's quite a bit, but let me just quickly tell you. Uh, uh, okay, now we just had a glimpse of how to, how to look at the economies. Now, these are some of the things we, we saw rate of growth, rate of GDP, unemployment, rate of inflation, uh, how much of savings Sri Lanka makes or countries make. Uh, these are all important things. Investments, very, very important investments. Why investments are important? If you make investments this year, you can be sure the next year is going to be a better year because that will create more production, more growth, so key is investment. <coughs> then uh, 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 the structure of the economy is something like this. If you take the economy as a percentage, uh, in the 1940s, Sri Lanka's economy, almost 90% is agriculture, tea, because there is very little from the rest of the economy, but then gradually it shifted. Now what we have now is we have about 50 odd percent of economy on services, banking, shipping, various other things. Uh, we have about 20 percent uh, agriculture, about 30 percent from manufacture. Now why it matters is this, for a country like Sri Lanka, we should have had 50 percent industry. That's what China does. When you have a structure, <coughs> economic structure, this economic structure 
suit certain countries in certain certain ways. For US, for example, there is a large service sector because they sell to services to everywhere. India is also doing a lot of service sectors, film industry, you know, software <laughs> industry, all that stuff. Are, are the backup services? Then China, on the other hand, is a manufacturing hub. Everything you look at has come from China. So China's structure, economic stuff, basically what it means is you cut the economy into where it comes from, agriculture, natural things, manufacture and service. Services means nothing tangible, it's intangible, right? So services sector. Then the capital output ratio is <coughs> uh, you invest certain amount of money, you get certain amount of output. If the output is less comparatively, then we say your capital output ratio is poor. Okay. Now, one example is let's say Matale Airport. Uh, people would say capital output ratio point of view, but there's hardly any output, and there was an investment, large investment. So there is. But on the other hand, if you take the uh, 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 expressway, Dakshin uh, Lanka uh, expressway, or ha uh, harbour expansions they have a very large returns. I'm just sort of, uh, uh, then, then there are other uh, material that you come across. When in the November, uh, October, by this time, we should have had the budget. So budget, uh, we talk about uh, very often businesses are looking at, okay, how much the deficit? Deficit means government earns money. How do they earn money? Taxes. And they spend money. The difference is called deficit. If the deficit is increasing, that means government had to borrow. And at the moment, there is a, too much of borrowing taking place and it's bad. Or if your borrowings are not enough, they do something, a jugglery. If we did it, we end up in prison, but government can do. What do they do? They print money and pay up. So the money wasn't there, you just print money. How do they print money? Actually, they don't print money. Money is already printed. It's in the central bank uh, basement. But central bank can't take that money out, not a single cent. They're just the custodians. The only way that money again gets into the system is government says central bank, hey, give us money. Now, economists normally don't like this. They say this is a bad thing. That's why central banks are basically given separate authority to manage that if you read uh, the news recent news uh, US uh, Donald Trump is having a serious argument with the central bank governor how we call Fed uh, to work things the way Donald Trump thinks they say no 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 we do our way India is also very strong but in Sri Lanka that's not the case um, so things like revenue are uh, uh, one of the problems so Sri Lanka has is revenue as a percentage of GDP. Government revenue, our GDP has expanded, but government revenue has not expanded. In fact, if you go to 1990s, Sri Lanka's government's revenue was about 20% or 19% of GDP. By 2016-15, it has fallen to 11%. Our expenditure has gone up on the other side. So as a result, if you take it in terms of GDP, you have a 4.5% to 5% of GDP deficit, which is too much. Okay. Then uh, I take the last one. Uh, there is another one called terms of trade. Uh, okay, I'll take both. Terms of trade is, uh, this is uh, uh, something like say, for example, uh, we make a tea, we import cars, okay. So when we import, uh, make tea, let's look at the values in terms of tea and cars. In the 1940s, we could buy a Toyota car with 10 metric tons of tea, let's assume, okay. So terms of trade is 10 to 1. Now, presently, if you want to buy the same Toyota car, almost a similar car, 
you probably have to give 25 metric tons of tea. So what had happened is the value of cars have gone up, value of tea has gone down. So terms of trade has gone against us. We call it terms of trade has deteriorated. Okay. So this is a broad figure, uh, roughly speaking. Then the last is uh, uh, reserves. Before I come to the reserves, let me go to the, the third uh, the la one one before the, uh, sorry, the third from the last balance of payments. I was talking to you how dollars coming into the country. Either we export, then coming in, and import dollars go out. So that difference we call trade balance. Okay. Now that's not the only way the money coming in. Our Sunil gone to Doha, Sarath is in Qatar, Sumana is in uh, Dubai, sending money. That money is also coming here for whatever the reason. And that comes with another 7 billion. So let's add that 7 billion into this difference. So it reduces the difference from 11 billion to 4 billion. Are we okay? 11 billion to 4 billion. But then, <coughs> We have to pay up interest, foreign interest. HSBC has uh, 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 raised some one billion uh, loans, so those loans have to be paid. So there are so many. I told, I told you saw that in something like fifty odd billion uh, uh, loans we have uh, from abroad. So we have to pay them. So those monies have to go out, right? So payments, interest payment, not the capital credit. So if you adjust these things. Then you get what we call current account. Now, current account is basically the business account of, like the profit and loss of a, 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 a company. Okay, so so that means that difference is called current account. But then it is negative. So how do we survive? How can we survive with a negative deficit? Which means you know you are, you have to find some finances. Then you get loans. Okay, you get loans. And if you put the loans into that account, we call it capital account. <coughs> loans are basically capital. And there are other ways of coming, money coming in. Investments coming in from abroad. So those are all dollars bringing into the country. They are loans, all right, but then money comes in. And if you add all these monies together, we call it balance of payment. And you can't have a balance of payment deficit. No country can survive. So basically, you borrow from somewhere and try to get a balance of payment surplus. Like in a uh, home, home front as well, right? In the home front, you have your incomes, then you have side incomes, you put that, and then you call it current account. It's a deficit. But then what do you do? You mortgage the, the, the last five, five purchases of your land and get a loan from the bank. So, so the, now, now you balance it. Now you have extra cash. So you have extra cash. That balance of payment is called <coughs> what we call the money available <coughs> in the country, dollars. Okay. Now, just having that amount of money is not good enough. It has to be scaled against something. So, Sri Lanka, let's say Sri Lanka has uh, eight billion dollars in the central bank with all this balance of payment, 8 billion. Now, central bank uh, makes another calculation. How did they calculate? Okay, supposing we don't get any money from anywhere, but we have to rely on imports, okay? Monthly import bill is something like uh, roughly about one and a half billion dollars monthly. So you have six billion, say seven, say, say, let's say six billion, six billion in the, in the central bank. So that means you can cover imports four months. That's called level of external reserves. Either you can give it in six billion dollars, or you give it in months of imports. So reserves can be given months of imports. Now, how does it, how do we make perspective on this? If you have your reserves levels at three months, you are in a very serious problem. If your reserve level goes to three months of imports cover, 
you are in a serious problem. Why? What's the serious problem? Nobody gives you cash. Hey, this guy is in a de dangerous debt situation. He won't give you. But if you have your ba ba uh, reserves cover about six and a half months, seven months, you're okay. <coughs> I mean, there's no immediate problem. <coughs> People don't see that you are going to crash. Are we okay? Right? Okay. Huh? Uh, it depends, it varies. <coughs> now, for example, uh, uh, our <coughs> remember exchange rate depreciated <coughs> in uh, uh, until January. That was because we were our balance of payment was getting squeezed because monies are moving out. So our reserves coming down. When the reserves come down, right, you can do two things. At home, if you have a reserve situation is really precarious, you know this money is not good enough for two weeks of living, right? What do you do? You run to your parents and tell Amma, Amma, I have a serious problem, can you help me? So Amma says, okay, I'll give you money, stop smoking, stop that, stop that, stop that, right? So. And but you have got to pay it back in within this one. And who is Amma for country? Not in that sense, IMF. So whenever you have a serious balance of payment problem, where do you go to? Balance uh, you IMF does not give loans. What it does is it gives what you call balance of payment support. It says okay. This is why IMF is very unpopular. Whenever you go to IMF, they say look. Cut your free education, cut your that, cut your this, cut your this, then only give you money. Okay? Same thing happened to Greece, for example. When Greece got into a serious balance of payment problem, actually, Greece situation was absolute disaster. Why? Because they went bankrupt. The minute you go bankrupt means nobody lends you. Recently, Sri Lankan government went to uh, uh, foreign country and we said okay we raise one billion and it's a pride we raise one billion is a pride why because people trust us but of course people trust us because we have still not gone to the the, the brink of collapse we might hit that but we are a small country so and a lot of people are interested in us so japan will come to save us south koreans will save us uh, European Union will save us, ADB will save us, you know, China, I mean, China, for example, Mahindra Rajapaksa's time, you know, what kept China, Mahindra's uh, 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 economic cycle going with China. And Mahindra didn't have any problem. Why? Because China was funding money. They were doing all kinds of investments and then there was a massive flow of money. And as a result, during Mahindra Rajapaksa's time, we had external reserves in a very healthy way. <coughs> Now, it depends. Now it keeps on. I, I'll, I'll show you the uh, diagrams. It keeps on varying. Okay. Now these are social indicators. I'm not going to go into details. Uh, these are political indicators, you know, which are uh, uh, useful but uh, uh, not very uh, uh, significant. Except that you know, now for example, regulatory of elections. This government is very bad <coughs> as far as regulatory election, but nobody cares. But on the other hand, uh, uh, freedom of fairness, uh, sorry, uh, uh, devolution of power, uh, devolution of power, uh, probably this government is, you know, <coughs> doing better than, uh, 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 at least uh, seemingly trying to do better than uh, previous government. Freedom of speech, probably uh, better looking. Uh, you know, so these are transparency, uh, it's not very clear. Why? Transparency means, you know, whatever you do, People must be able to see what is happening underneath. And the worst scenario was central bank bond scam. I mean, they came here saying that, okay, we're going to be really transparent. Everything we do, you can see. And what happened to the central bank was something they never expected, nobody expected. And it was not somebody saw. It was <coughs> because somebody who is in the game 
didn't like the way the game was played. It is not you and I. Who found out some bomb scam was not anybody, not newspapers. Who? There were other guys who were in the in the bidding process. They said, hey, look here, how did this happen? They leaked it. And it took two years for people to understand what the hell was going on. Even now, we don't know. Anyway, so the transparency, that much of transparency we have. Anyway. Uh, uh, so there are things like corruption in this, so all that, you know, that's there. Then, uh, I, 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 this is to say that the, uh, if you want to look at economy, whether doing well, you look at investment, you look at budget, you look at uh, education, you know, all that investments. Uh, I move on here. <coughs> this is also, now I come to, uh, um, what does, now this is, uh, you know this guy, he's Ranil Vikrasinghe, Prime Minister of this country. He says he's going to revive the economy uh, when he just about to retire. Now, because, now, they came into power in 2015, so now they say, okay, everything is on uh, a bad shape, so they managed to get things around. So, okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, so these are <coughs> the, uh, what they are supposed to do in fiscal policy. <coughs> They can uh, influence the economy. Remember that diagram, <coughs> the flow, the government is there. The government can really create the flow or uh, 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 slow down the flow. Right? Government can create exports, uh, uh, less imports. So it's all part of the government policy. <coughs> so government operates through fiscal policy, which is the main mechanism. Then the monetary policy is uh, central bank. Then industrial policy is again government which are coming, um, fiscal policies, you know, how the money is spent. Now, for example, if the government says we want to have uh, some, uh, uh, say, uh, the present government said uh, we want to give uh, tabs to kids, school going, high level kids, right? Now, that's <coughs> the, uh, it's a fiscal policy decision, you know, they say. But then it can have implications on the industrial policy. What they say is with the tabs, children will be able to be more IT uh, savvy, you know, so we will uh, eventually be able to become <coughs> very strong in IT. Then counter suggestion argument is, you know, this time people are, children, parents are finding it difficult to manage mobile phones with kids. Now with the tabs, things are going to be absolutely messy, honestly I can tell you. <coughs> One of the I'm, I'm, I'm most, uh, 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 it's a horrendous study, uh, uh, policy to give this and uh, create a situation which can, which is a different uh, discussion. Then uh, exchange rate policy again, I, I told you Mahindra Rajapaksa regime, they wanted to have the exchange rate at a certain level and this government had a, a different uh, way of looking at it. Uh, so it's there. Yeah. These are, and normally we call fiscal policies a mother of all policies because every policy eventually decided by Mangala Samarang. Because whatever the policies you take, you know, unless it is being funded by <coughs> the finance ministry, it's not going to work. Uh, so these are some of the reasons why the fiscal is important. <coughs> uh, 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 government expenditure is rising, revenue is falling, budget deficit is ballooning, and so then there are social welfare issues. This is what Sajid Premadas is talking about. He says, and I'm going to make everybody rich. Uh, 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 you know, so this is going to harp on that, but then it's very, uh, it's, it's like thin air, in thin air. Then uh, 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 past liabilities, how, what the last government had done and what you have done, so uh, the debt, debt has to be paid. Then, um, uh, then uh, uh, investments are not taking place, uh, private investments, so those are all uh, then uh, again, uh, we, we look at uh, why uh, uh, balance of payment is a problem. Uh, I, I don't want, I think a little too much. Uh, let me just skip this section. Now I come to the story. Okay. This is Sri Lankan story. <coughs> 1950, we were bet, everybody is betting on Sri Lanka as the the, 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 the real star of Asia. 
but that, that was not to be. And 1956, uh, uh, but of course 1950, uh, people uh, didn't look at Sri Lankan economy properly. Although we were rich, it was rich for few rich, few people. Mm. Large segment of Sri Lankan population was very poor. <coughs> they were not part of the plantation. In fact, they were totally so. In fact, Sri Lanka had two economies. One is a very sophisticated, highly organized, highly rich, and foreign integrated banks funding. Yeah, there's another one which was basically hand to mouth. You know, there is hardly anything. I remember my father used to say uh, when people, uh, you know, move around in carts, bullock carts, and um, <coughs> they, they they had to sit on the bone lee. Right, and um, there was a governor. He didn't. He, when he passes, people can't get down, you know. So, and he got offended by that. He passed a law to say that hereafter people can't travel on the bone lee. Right? So, but people are traveling on the bone lee because that's the way ca the cart is balanced. Anyway, this is the kind of then Sri Lankans. Whenever Sri Lankans wanted. To have any money, there was a huge banking sector we had, but they never lent to Sri Lanka. They never went to Sri Lanka. Even if they did, they lent at a high rate of interest, just to discourage them. Okay. So there was serious structural problems. Uh, in 1956, the government came into power. <coughs> they thought, okay, we don't have money. Balance of payment is a serious problem because money all T money went down. So as a result. They had to uh, try various other methods of. Uh, uh, so what they did was they closed the economy and said, "Okay, let's make our things ourselves." So we started so many industries, which was right to a certain extent. But what was wrong was these industries are all done by the government, majority of it, <coughs> and they were not profitable. They were not efficient. They had their technologies which were <coughs> looking very archaic. Too. Then 1977 to 82 <coughs> comes J. Jawadana. He says, okay, these closed economies are all bad and he opens the economy. And again, he was told, look, we are going to be the star of Asia because we were the first to have opened the economy. Okay. And in fact, J.R. got the title uh, Yankee Dicky, you know, because he, it was very much the American thinking. Uh, but of course, then we uh, did something absolutely horrendous. We went and hit the tunnels and created the ethnic war, and that was 1982. And that <coughs> was one reason we had a legacy of problems for 30 years ago. It was it and God, that, that government was absolutely responsible for it. They never did anything. They never did anything. We were schooling at that time. Anyway. So that was all history, <coughs> and then, uh, but of course, in at that time, before that, 1982, Sri Lanka has uh, in, uh, got attracted a lot of uh, investors, and Sri Lanka got a lot of funds from abroad, because when we did this opening of the economy, we became the darling of the West. Everybody wanted to come in here. So when Jaya Jawadana decided to do Mahavali project in five years. Not only because that he wanted to do it, he got the money, and this money had to be spent. And he thought, okay, if once the money comes, its best thing is to hammer it out. And you had the Swedish uh, grant, uh, uh, British grant for Victoria, Swedish grant for Madrue. Then there was another uh, uh, German. There was a uh, you know, the whole government of fellows, all funded grants, absolute grants. <coughs> Uh, but of course, at that time, uh, there were a lot of uh, loans given by the World Bank as well. Uh, then 19, uh, 1982 was a turning point. Then 1982 to 90 was a uh, Bhima Samaya, uh, JVP did their bit uh, to a very large extent, and the government also countered. And it was a time where you know things didn't, didn't move at all. In 1990 came uh, uh, 89 came Prem and uh, he did something very sensible. What he did was he uh, started exports, garment sector. Uh, he was the guy who pushed the garments and saw the garments as a way out of the whole uh, legacy. Uh, but of course, he had his own issues as well. And but that was a turning point. 
then uh, <coughs> 95, uh, so the garments, uh, uh, 200 garment factory project sort of expanded. Uh, then 1995, uh, we had uh, uh, Chandrika coming in and she had something called uh, economic development human face. That's a politically very important uh, uh, change because at the first time, both the UNP and the SLFP accepting capitalism. <coughs> So this is basically capitalism, but of course, and it has a human touch. It says, okay, it's not free market economy, but to, but of course, the way the things they did are not the most capitalistic ever, because most of the uh, 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 corporations uh, Sri Lanka had were all privatized. Okay, so this is, and one of the worst privatizations they did was National Development Bank, which should have provided long-term funding. I told you investments are very important and at the moment one of the problems investors are having is they don't have a long-term funding system. So as a result we are deprived of the NDP and the DFCC you know, both have become a commercial banks not any more uh, uh, long-term lending. 2005 to 2014 <coughs> was uh, another uh, phase that was Mahindra Rajapaksa phase. Mahindra Rajapaksa phase uh, had uh, something uh, uh, two important things one is he he invested on infrastructure <coughs> massively and china came in a big way and uh, the other is that he is uh, put a uh, uh, stop finished to the war so so basically the political volatility was completely uh, managed and it was pretty um, uh, i would say uh, uh, very good thinking uh, as the war finishes you are ready with infrastructure this is this is quite good thinking but the problem they had was <coughs> they didn't understand how human psyche works after the war so there was an, a discipline there was a need for various other economically they did the right thing they they, they really did the right thing but the uh, sri lanka is a literate society so their expectations are very different so which they didn't understand and they paid the price in 2015 and the which was the slogan mean to say okay we're going to manage the economy well we're going to run the economy in a professional way comes Maitri Pala Sagasena and Daniel Vikramasinghe and uh, <coughs> then uh, that was uh, uh, that was a big expectation and it was actually they had the whole thing on a plateau all what they had to do is put the things down get the machine going and run the business and they forgot they went on all different directions and they made the, the, the biggest uh, blunder of uh, uh, two blunders they made. First was the giving uh, 10,000 rupees to government servants, which is a big blunder. We don't have money, but you just pay out of your credit card, which created 150 billion extra expenditure on salaries. Right? <clears throat> and what do we do with that money? We imported goods, so we created a balance of payment problem. So it's all history. Second was the central bank uh, uh, fiasco, which really sort of dragged them down uh, terribly. And then the all calamities inside. And uh, unfortunately, the, the UNP government, which was supposed to have been <coughs> uh, investor friendly government, a capitalist government, didn't know basics of how to manage the economy. I don't know why it happened. It happened. Now, of course, you know, they are talking about they are going to revive the economy. Uh, as they are about to uh, perish. Uh, so this is the. Uh, uh, um, now I'm going to uh, take you down this chart, set of charts. This is from the central bank. Uh, if you go to a central bank uh, uh, CBSL, and you can see uh, this. The, this is the latest charts they have. Now this is look at this uh, uh, growth chart. <coughs> Look at Sri Lanka's growth. Uh, up to 2012, this is the first time in Sri Lankan history we have ever reached 8%, 8.5%, 9% economic growth. That was in uh, 2010, 11, 12. Uh, then 2013 and 14, uh, uh, actually what happened was this is not the original estimates. When you work out the GDP, let me just make a very quick uh, Basically, summation of prices. Okay. 
prices of thing and the quantities of the thing. But as you can see, this can is by this and this. Actually, price doesn't make sense. Price is somebody is paying higher price, and somebody is paying uh, getting higher higher return. So it's this. So price change does not make sense. What really makes sense as of GDP is the output. If there are more coconuts in your garden, that means it's worth it. If the coconut prices go up, that is not GDP. Okay? But in fact, the money is how you get it. Right? So what do we need? Squeeze this money. Meaning you take some years of prices, and this GDP is for a longer But we increase the prices of some year. There's another option. Right? Now what you have is a GDP which has discounted prices. Okay, this is called real GDP. So when you're talking about the GDP, you're talking about this number. Okay? Real GDP. Real GDP is you take prices to compare the back now. This uh, GDP is uh, what happened was now when you take this price, when you take this price, earlier they were taking the price in 2005. 2005. Now this government was, <coughs> when they came in, they didn't like the fact that in Pandora is not really had good GDP growth. They decided to revise the value. The prices are different calculations. Maybe they're wrong. Something like that. So as a result, you've got different things. Normally, if you look at this, some set up the next set is 2005. You can all bring this to one particular platform by simply slicing. Just change it so it I guess you know, engineers you know. Now <coughs> what happened was they adjusted. So some figures went up. It was not earlier than eight nine, it was about seven, seven and a half, seven, eight. And they want to take these figures looking bad because that's the years. But then what happened was when they did that, they realized their figures are going to be worse. So they did. The, 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 there was a bit of a political issue here, but nevertheless, you can see, even forget that all that stuff, what you see is, it's a, it's a, it's a downflow. So GDP has been falling very rapidly. And quarterly wise, you can see GDP is not doing much. Now this is uh, the sectors, each sector, how each sector has been doing. Now, for an economy, like Sri Lanka, most important is industry. Why? Because that is where the jobs are created. That's where the, <coughs> uh, the, the real uh, 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 poverty levels are uh, enhanced. That's where uh, monies are flowing into the rural masses. Agriculture is also important to a certain extent, but then it doesn't have the capacity to make in, uh, exports. In industry is the one that makes exports. Look at what has happened. <coughs> Industry has been falling uh, rapidly, and in 2019 it has hit uh, negative figures. So, which is uh, basically not surprising. Services is a kind of a going on a plateau. It normally goes around four and a half percent, five percent, six percent. So, if you take the values here, <coughs> if you want to have a nice GDP growth, you must have agriculture doing at least not negative, say about two percent, three percent. Industry is doing 8%, 9%, 10%. <coughs> Services doing 4.5%, 5%. If you combine all three, you get a good GDP. Okay? So this is where it's missing. This is per capita GDP. Now, per capita GDP, there was a massive increase of per capita GDP <coughs> from 2000 <coughs> 2014. Then what happens? It plateaued. So it doesn't go anymore. It's, uh, as you could see here, uh, in 2015, 16, 17, it's uh, looking uh, fairly flat. Um, now this is uh, industrial production. Uh, 
uh, I uh, skip this because it's a quarterly figure. Uh, unemployment. This is unemployment. Now, as you could see here, there's a massive drop in unemployment uh, until about 2012. Now, I must say this may have been due to uh, several reasons. One is there were small industries uh, which were uh, expanding, then the second is construction industries. Third, uh, during Mahindra's time, they increased the government servants uh, uh, intake massively by several hundred thousands, which is not the right thing. I mean, you can't run the uh, economy by taking everybody to the government and, <coughs> and saying that, okay, we have brought unemployment down. Okay. So, but then what is important here is, uh, 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 apart from the government, uh, there were quite a number of other uh, activities taking place. But then what has happened is we are hit a plateau here now. So we are going around four and a half percent. Now poverty, uh, poverty uh, again, poverty has dropped quite significantly uh, from about say 1990s. We had about almost one third of population below poverty levels. Now we are at the moment uh, below uh, around. Uh, below 5%. Now, there is an important thing about poverty here as well. Now, poverty is an artificial indicator and say, look, anybody who is falling below this is poverty. Okay? Anybody falling. Now, but the problem is, you know, does this artificial uh, parameter reflect the true poverty? So, this is, uh, I'm not very much convinced about this poverty statistics. Politicians love to take this poverty statistic and say, look, we have brought the poverty statistic. But then if the poverty statistic is going down, you don't have to give so much of Samurthi. <coughs> Samurthi is linked to poverty. Simple as that, right? Um, uh, this is inflation. Uh, it's uh, not as bad as... Now, this is... Uh, uh, Producers price index, it's a whole. Let, let me just make another point here. Um, something. Okay. This is uh, our, I told you, our exports. <coughs> As you could see here, we are, our exports have uh, uh, not been increasing. Uh, but we need to have gone massively. At the moment, we are, uh, 2018, we are having 11, uh, almost 12 billion. Now, this is after even GSP plus is given. You know, this government came into power. They had the, the luxury of foreign countries, especially the uh, exporting. Because our exports go to Europe. Uh, we get imports from Asia and uh, South Asia, so which are two different things. So China <coughs> uh, doesn't help us in exports. But U.S. and uh, uh, European countries. So Sri Lanka uh, government, present government, had the luxury of uh, uh, that being the uh, favor of the, this country, but we have not been able to uh, capitalize on it. Uh, this is uh, imports. <coughs> uh, as you could see here, imports uh, generally have been rising. Uh, if the economy is doing well, imports are rising. But what you have is a bit of a plateau there uh, at the more recent times. Uh, this is uh, partly uh, the imports are, when the economy slows down, imports are also slowing down. Now, this is something that we have to be very concerned <coughs> trade balance. What has happened to us? Our trade balance has <coughs> this 2011 and 12. For well, the years, uh, for years, we had huge uh, oil crisis, massive oil crisis, and but then I don't understand why the trade balance is now hitting a uh, very bad uh, currently as well. Okay, as you could see here, uh, from 2014 onwards, it has been deteriorating very rapidly, despite the fact that we have. Um, the, the tourist arrivals have been a blessing, it has worked, but then it has shown its vulnerability to rely on tourism as a major sector. We cannot rely on tourism. So if a country, uh, if the Sri Lanka is to develop, we have to rely on more stable 
uh, production. What is the sustainable production? What China has done? Manufacturing, not services. India has gone down the services line. What is happening? The problem with services is services sector requires a certain educational levels. <coughs> services sector requires uh, uh, more income, creates income gaps. Whereas manufacturing sector has an ability to absorb people of all classes. And that will elevate people from bottom to the top. So services sector might make a country rich, but it will make many poor. Manufacturing on the other hand will make the country rich and as much as making the country rich, they can spread the benefits across the society. This is why China's economic growth has been quite different from uh, India's economic growth. Okay? People who are, I, I told you, I live near a Chinese hotel and Chinese, every Chinese come, you know, they come with families. Amazing, you know, how much they spend uh, as tourists. Uh, this is the other savior of our country. <coughs> if this was not there, we'd have been doomed. We would have been worse than Greece. How much are we getting? We are getting 7 billion on average. But now as you could see here, our growth has topped up. So that means we don't seem to be, should, should be expecting this is to grow. Rather, this could decline. Why? Two reasons. When the oil prices came down, Middle Eastern countries can't have the capacity to uh, employ people. When the oil prices are going up, as you could see here, it went up rapidly. Remittances went up because everybody uh, have got job. Now, Saudi Arabia is uh, getting facing bankruptcy. So many other countries are uh, uh, having problems. So things are going to be. This is uh, <coughs> uh, current account balance. Current account balance is uh, uh, basically, uh, I told you, the cash balance, how much of dollars coming in, in terms of business. This is uh, foreign direct investments. <coughs> uh, the uh, we are we are hitting around two billion, but whereas uh, most of the other uh, countries have attracted much more than Sri Lanka had done. This is the overall balance of payments. Now, as you could see, I told you, balance of payment is the overall situation. Now, there were certain instances where the balance of payment has gone When this happens, where do we run to? Without the IMF. Mahindra ran with IMF. 2008 was a bad year because that was the time where the global crisis, uh, American uh, called subprime mortgage crisis, took place. <coughs> the global system faced one of the worst crises in the in the history. And uh, so, then again, 2011, uh, 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 IMF uh, uh, supported. But in the case of uh, that one. Uh, what happened was uh, Mind Rajapaks regime had the advantage, they got the IMF money to come in and then as a result, you know, they raised their uh, standard, <coughs> uh, international standard. So the second time when the IMF uh, money uh, was due, they said, no, we don't want it because they got the money. They got the money from other sources. Okay. Uh, in the case of uh, this uh, 2015, 2015 was, there were a lot of investments that had lined up into Sri Lanka. <coughs> when this government came in, they said, no, we don't want China. We don't want uh, 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 casinos. We don't want that. You know, investors just don't come walk in, walk out like that. You get an investor through a lot of hard work. I was talking to someone now about the Shangri-La. <coughs> now, why the Shangri-La was given the particular uh, prime place, the, uh, the answer was, you know, getting Shangri-La was something like you're bringing a film star. You know, it's not just another investment. So people do these kind of things. So I think that vision uh, is necessary if you want to. So unfortunately, as you can see here, Sri Lanka had two bad years consecutively. In 2017, uh, 2.5, because we got a lot of borrowings. I'll show you that. <coughs> now, this is the reserves. I was talking about reserves. Here it is. 
months of imports and there are two sites one is billions you talk about how many how much are the reserves the billions are in the in, in the uh, the pillars and uh, months are in line. As you could see here, uh, 2014 onwards, what you see is a reserve state of having depleting gradually. Okay? So, uh, uh, March 18, where the, uh, the, uh, the reserves have reached uh, one of the best, that is about five months, uh, otherwise, it was one in the So, this is a uh, uh, another short term problem. This is the exchange rate movement as you could see here. Exchange rate movement was fairly stable here, then uh, uh, you can see there is a sudden spike. Now, this is uh, government revenue. In the case of Sri Lanka government revenue, uh, 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 2015 16 government revenue. Was from an IMF point of view, that's a good sign that we call fiscal consolidation. Until then, the government revenue has been going down. But there's a massive secret underneath. How did they raise the government revenue? They taxed us. How? Value added taxes. That was one reason economic growth stifled. Because when people's money being taken out, they don't have money to spend. Okay, it, it is nice on the account, banned on the economy, and it's very bad from an uh, income point of view because if you tax the poor, you are making the income distribution bad. Poor becoming poorer because they are they are paying much more taxes. Take for example, if you are buying uh, a loaf of bread, there is a two rupee tax. Okay, so two rupee tax uh, on uh, on the loaf of bread. Let's say loaf of bread is hundred rupees. Two rupees mean two percent. Right? Whether you are billionaire or whether you are a higanna, both pay two percent. That's we call regressive taxing. Then this is uh, another uh, uh, thing. Uh, Government expenditure has been uh, coming down as a percentage of GDP. Anyway, now uh, this segment is about 9, 10, 13, 14. Uh, the rise is when government undertakes a lot of public investments, the uh, expenditures was. Now uh, there is a decline here. Now, this is public investments. Now, as you could see here, what is public investments? Why it is important? What is public investment? Public investment is roads, highways, bridges, schools, hospitals. These are fundamental for economic growth and human welfare. Now, what has happened here is <coughs> 2015, 16, 17, 18, it was a decline. Uh, in the case of uh, 2005 to 2000, uh, 2011, it was quite high. But then there was a, 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 a lap of uh, going down, and then uh, uh, it has been going down again. Now, this is budget deficit. Uh, it is still fairly high, 5.5%. And why it is being forecasted, uh, uh, they are trying to forecast it to below 4%. Now this is what I am trying to. There is a big talk. There is a lot of uh, uh, borrowings. Uh, uh, the present government talks, but what you see here is actually the net borrowings have gone up. Uh, if you look at uh, 2004, 2005, you almost 100 percent. Can you see 100 percent? It comes down to about 60 uh, by 2014. It's about 71.3%. The target was, it was to be brought down to 60%. But what happened was, it began to go up again. So, this is where this government is uh, uh, not uh, telling the truth. If they are paying up debt, the debt should come down. 
debt level should come down. Whereas debt level has gone up, means they are borrowing much more than they are paying. Okay. So, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, not so important to us uh, in a class like this, but there is one important thing in this one, credit to the private sector. Now, credit to the private sector means that this is a, a good barometer of how much private sector is interested in investing. So, when the credit goes down, it means private sector is not making their uh, moves uh, sufficiently. So, what has happened here is <coughs> the private sector credit has been Private sector has been going down dramatically. It has been falling uh, quite rapidly. Um, 2015 rose rapidly, but then all expectations vanished and it has been falling down. Okay. Now, but what has happened to the other, other one? The, the background private sector is in debt increasing, as you could see here. Now, there is another statistic, I do not know whether it is available here. The bad debts in the private sector is ballooning. When the economy is going down, these are the serious consequences. This is net credit to the government. <coughs> the net credit to the government by the central bank. Now, the, I told you money printing. When the central bank gives money, as you can see here, there was a big uh, uh, argument against this. Even Dr. Harsha de Silva was talking about uh, borrowing from the central bank is a sin. But that's what they have done. They have done uh, massively. Uh, if you can see the peaks here. Now, you might think, well, this is, a, this is more politically talking. But you can't escape, escape the fact that economics is driven by politicians. They can't escape the responsibility. Then the, uh, uh, the borrowing from the, uh, uh, who, who, who has been borrowing from the, uh, uh, the commercial banks? Government. Government has a massive, why do they have to borrow? They were spending, now even this year, they are going to spend a massive amount of money because election is around the corner, they want to inject a lot of money into the card. Uh, okay, now I, I think this is also interesting. <coughs> what has happened here is another thing what happened was with the central bank fiasco, there is another m big uh, injury to the economy. What was that? Interest rates went up. When the interest rates go up, what, what it does is cost of finance private sector will find profitability uh, a complete challenge. So now they are realized that they are bring the interest rates down, but at the wrong time it is uh, having yet another scenarios uh, <coughs> taking place. Okay. The, uh, yesterday or today, they, yesterday they brought the interest rates down by 0.5%. Uh, these are uh, 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 other bits and pieces. As you can see here, interest rate curves are all going up. <coughs> this is bad for an economy. Uh, okay, now this is what I will do. I told you non performing loans. came down. It's going up. What does it mean? most of the people are unable to service their loans, <coughs> private sector. This is a very, very bad sign. And this is a bad sign for private sector, bad sign for banks. Because banks are going to be uh, uh, st stacked up with bad debts. <coughs> okay, so this is, uh, these are, uh, other things are not so important. We are kind of uh, hit uh, 7.30. Uh, let me just uh, make a, I, I came across this particular set of slides. Now what you see here is, and this is something beyond uh, uh, basic economics. This is the capitalist system, how it works. But you have this side is slums, but you have that side is luxury. This is uh, 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 amazing. Uh, so this is, uh, this. Uh, where is this country? This is Mexico City. This is uh, Mexico City. Some countries are very bad. Mexico City, Delhi, Dakar, 
this is South Africa they are very bad places no, it's okay. no this is South Africa that's okay this is Tanzania that's okay this is Tanzania this is Kenya <coughs> this is Nairobi Kenya this is okay I want to get this is California the world's richest county California is almost more than 50 percent of US the issues are quite significant so this is going beyond this is Oakland California homeless uh, people so this is also kind of economics that you have to bear in mind those countries can be rich looking rich but that doesn't mean it is equally or fairly equitably getting distributed so so these are Seattle this is homelessness is one of the real problems there New York is pretty bad these are this is US this is a, a diagram where you see look at the roads how much of uh, tracks that you see on these roads not being maintained these are Los Angeles this is in India well not surprising this is Mumbai India Johannesburg okay okay you can see the, uh, so my whole uh, point is uh, so things just to give you a glimpse of what means, you know, what are the things you see. Looking at, when you look at the uh, graph, what kind of story it tells, it's not only the value of the way it's moving, which direction, the balances. Then, uh, uh, the last uh, set of slides that, the, that show, show us that this economic story had to go beyond simply making money. It has to be able to absorb uh, other people's needs as well. If you look at the uh, debate in the US, there are two very individuals who are talking. One is Bernie Sanders. He's talking about creating economic growth, not from making people to invest more, but getting people to be able to buy things. You understand? So he says, let's make the people rich at the bottom they will buy things and that will make everybody but Donald Trump's uh, argument is no <coughs> we must make rich people richer so that they will make more investments okay but of course Donald Trump is somewhat different from other Republicans uh, he had uh, a kind of a, his own style of looking at things Macron on the other hand is a more capitalistic uh, 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 Joe in uh, UK is, whereas the Labour guy is talking about uh, a different kind of economics. Last thing, there's a, there's a belief that we say uh, if the uh, Google, Apple, these are all private sector entities, they were able to create massively important things. There's a new book that has been published in the UK, it says no. They were all first funded by the government. Google was first funded by the research was funded by government. So if you think, well, hands off, let the private sector to do everything, that's not going to work. It has never worked. These are all driven by the government support and government push. So our debate here is in the Sri Lankan context, present government says, hands off, let's private sector do everything which never, they never managed well, but philosophically that's there. That was the wrong way to go about. My last parting shot is, this is my personal thing. We have finance city which is coming up, port city. In my opinion, it's not a blessing. It's bad. Why? It's going to kill our manufacturing sector. It happened to UK. When UK went towards more financial uh, hub basis, it lost all the manufacturing. Now, what do we get from UK as manufactured in UK? Almost nothing. That was not the case 30, 40 years ago. Okay. When no, comes. What is happening? Okay. Now, now that you ask, what happens is this: <clears throat> when the port city uh, economy has something called real economy, production, goods and selling. 
for them something very important has to take place. This is where Mahindra Rajapaksa regime also didn't recognize well. Exchange rate. Exchange rate <coughs> is decided by how much money coming in, how much money goes out. Okay. For an exporter, the best thing to happen is exchange rate goes down. If the rupee depreciates, it's good for our exporter. Exporters are going to love that. This is what China has been doing. China was, that's why Donald Trump says China is a currency manipulator. And now China was landed with taxes, import taxes. What did China do? All right, go ahead. We have another weapon. They let the renminbi go down. What it does is it creates a profitability in the very small. Let's say I'm selling a shirt for $10. I'm making the shirt look, let's say my cost of the shirt is $8 and the dollar value is 100 for the mean. So this is the okay, difference, $8. Alright? So every time I make a shirt, I spend $800 and I get $10. Right? So my profit is $200 or $2. Now, if government let the exchange rate go down, when the government exchange rate go down, now it is not 100, it is 150. Okay, let's say it's 150. If it is 150, what happens is, now he gets money in 10 years. Right? So, how much he earns? 150 means you are getting 1,500. Now you are getting 1,000. Now, since it is uh, uh, 150, the dollar value here goes for a value of eight dollars, so that will be now seven dollars. So what what it does is it allows you a bigger dollar market. Minimum bet dollar market coming in the export. Taking advantage. Now you say, okay, I'm not selling it at night, I'm selling it at night. So every shot you're selling it at night. Yeah, come on, you're losing one dollar, but you're making big money. That's what Bangladesh is doing. They were able to create this competitiveness through now, what and also how does the finance city is going to affect us? Finance city will bring money, bring money, get money, that money next day can go out. Okay? Finance city brings money. So what happens is our dollar market becomes very unstable. Very, very unstable because we, we have uh, the rest of the economy. Uh, all. Now, then what happens is dollar value goes up because there are more dollars coming in. More dollars in the market means, in simple terms, rupee to a dollar goes up. That's bad for exports. So, the manufacturing sector is going to get happened. That's the overly simplified way of looking. So, in my opinion, finance city. <coughs> should be totally separated from us if that is to operate anyway so the, the, there are complicated things uh, uh, that uh, uh, but my last message is think economics as a simple subject it's not a big deal it's not rocket science if you pay a little attention keep a track of few things you understand what's going on you don't have to be an economist in fact don't listen to economists they're bullshitters, including me. <coughs> right? What is necessary is everybody is a practicing economist. You know what is good for you, what is bad for you. If you understand this difference and you know how to look at it, you make sense. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> All right. Okay. Good night. <coughs>